So, I'm not even going to go through them. I just want a yay or a nay. Uh, questions A through C in question one. Yay? Yay. Yay, hooray. Okay, fantastic. We'll come back to those questions shortly. I'll tell you why later on. 2A and 2B, let's have a look at these. So, one thing I really like is that you can see all of the working is here, so you can know exactly why it's negative two, it's negative three. I didn't ask for working, by the way, so if you didn't put working, it's no big deal. Um, you can see that we're thinking of that pair of numbers, 2x, 3x, and that lets us divide up. I will point out, for questions where it's, see this number at the front, you know how there's a number hiding in front of the x squared? What's the number? It's a one. So you might recall that we call these, all three of these, we call them monic quadratic equations, because mono for one, like monorail, okay? So when it's monic, and you think of that pair of numbers, two and three, I'm very happy for you to immediately go to this line, right? You've thought of the two and the three, what you can do with that is make them part of the factors that you come up with, x plus three, x plus two, and that's why x equals negative three and negative two, those are your solutions, okay? Please remember, Brian, Remember what solutions are. Solutions are numbers you can put into x up here, and they work, right? If you put in negative two everywhere you see x, then sure enough that stuff on the left does, be, does equal zero, right? If you put in negative three up here, let's just quickly do it. Negative three squared is nine. Five times negative three is minus 15, 9 minus 15 plus 6, sure enough, it equals 0, okay? So that's what x equals negative 2 and negative 3, that's the significance of those values. Uh, when you have a look here, I would like it if um, you put like a comma there so that we, we see these together. Uh, negative 3 and 4, they look good to me. Okay. Now did anyone get part C? You get part C, okay, right. Part C, the reason why only one of you got it is because despite looking so much like these other questions, it's actually in a very important way qualitatively different. If you looked at it and you scratched your head, that's okay. We searched for a pair of numbers, right? What rules or what conditions did your pair of numbers have to fit? Like two and three, why did you pick those? They, they add up to five and they multiply to six. Now, when you look down here, you try and use the same strategy, you're like, add up to three, M multiply to one? I mean, the only numbers I multiply, know that multiply to one are like one and one, right? And they don't add up to three. So you suddenly find yourself in this dilemma. Now, just put your pen down for a second. For me, as a teacher, it's always really important. I'm like, why are we learning this? Whatever is the next thing that we're learning, okay? You have to have a why, okay? In maths, so often, and we've seen this many, many times before, so often we develop new ideas because our old ideas, which served us really well in particular problems, aren't as useful when you just change the problem a teeny bit. You're like, oh no, what do I do with this now, right? They look very similar, they're similar in almost every way, but changing a tiny detail. In this case, it's these numbers here, renders your previous techniques like Pythagoras, renders them useless, right? You've, good, you've got to develop new stuff. That's why we invent stuff like trigonometry. So I'm going to teach you a technique today that's all about trying to wrap your head around a problem like this. And it's actually a really beautiful technique. I want you to make a heading for me, and I need to keep this stuff on the board, so pardon me if it's a little bit cramped. The heading I'd like you to make underneath review questions is completing the square. Now, I promise this heading will make sense in a minute as soon as we start to have a go at these questions over here. I'm gonna hijack those questions at the beginning, and I'm gonna say, if I asked you, uh, I'm just gonna write for example, if I asked you to solve x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0, if I asked you to solve that, then because we know how it factorizes, this is actually a very easy problem to do. You guys could do this in your sleep. I'm going to reverse what you did. You expanded, so I've factorized. That equals 0. 
And now what I'm searching for is values of x that will make that work. There's only one. What is it? x equals, I think I heard it, negative 3 will do the job for us, right? You put it in there, negative 3 plus 3, that gives you 0. It works. Everything looks good. Okay. Now, we like these guys. These guys are really nice. They're perfect squares. They're perfect squares. And so in fact, if what I had done was ask you to factorize these, hopefully you might start to recognize, oh, Look, see these guys on the ends? See 9, 49, 25? They're all squares, right? See the numbers in the middle? 6, negative 14, 10. Those guys are related to the squares. How are they? Well, what's half of 6? 3. Which is the square root. What's half of negative 14? Negative 7, which is, you can square it to get 49. And half of 10, of course, is 5, which is the square root over here. So what I can do is imagine, have a look at this guy here. If I said, I'm actually going to change it a little bit. If I had this, this is my second example. Okay, X squared, I really should have put this one instead. X squared plus 4X plus 1. Um, if you try to solve this question, you will end up in exactly the same problem as you had with this one. Um, you can't think of a number that, pair of numbers that adds to 4 and multiplies to 1. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's just put this guy here. Leave that to one side, and see this plus one? I'm going to put him over on the right-hand side for reasons that will become clear in a moment. I just want to focus on the left, okay? Now, can you see it's like got a piece missing? It's got a piece missing, right? What I want to do is turn the left-hand side into a square. I want to add something to it that turns the left-hand side into a square, just like all these guys are squares. You see that? Okay. So, what square? would it have come from, right? For example, you guys can see this came from x plus 3 squared. You, you guys wrote this answer. Uh, this came from x minus 7 squared, and that's how you got this answer, okay? So being that I've got this number, and I'm trying to find this number, how do I go from this number to that, and from this number to that, and from this number to that? I have to do two things, and I mentioned it to you before. First, I've got to halve it, that gives you 5. And then I've got to square it, that gives you the 25. Okay? Now have a look at it in this instance. I'm going to take this guy, right? To get from here to here, and I'd love you to write this down with me, maybe another color if you've got it. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to halve the number, and then I'm, after that, going to square it. Halve, then square. Now you guys can do this for me. Halving's not too hard. Um, half of 4 is 2. And then you square it, which gives you 4. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to add 4. Okay. Now, if you added 4, sorry, I should have put that back in that other color. If you added 4 to one side, well, this is an equation, right? You can't just go adding things to one side because you feel like it, because it makes things nice and neat. You add 4 to one side, you've got to add 4 to the other side. So, I'll do that. Okay? Now, for the step I'm about to do next, or the steps I'm going to do next, I actually just want you to watch this bit. So, having gotten this down, put your pens down and watch what's about to happen. I promise I won't rub this off until we're ready. Okay? The reason we added 4 is because now this thing here is a square, just like these things were. Like you picture a square, it looks like that, doesn't it? Okay, but what I'm trying to say to you is that these are algebraic versions of squares. So what square is it? Well, it's something squared. I'm trying to reverse engineer this, right? I'm trying to go from here back to the question. I don't know if any of you watched the, the show Jeopardy before, it's like US game show, and they give you answers, you have to come up with questions, right? Well, where this has come from is x plus 2. You could go ahead and you could prove it for yourself, just like we did in question 1. By expanding this, you will get this here. Okay? So that's the left-hand side. What's the right-hand side? What's negative 1 plus 4? Now, hmm. when we had 0 on the right-hand side up here, at this point, we were done. 
we were finished, okay? But we don't have zero on the right-hand side here. The answer is not negative two. I need to do a teeny little bit more work, okay? You can pick up your pen again now. Go ahead and write this, x plus two all squared equals three, okay? Now, where do I go from here? Well, there's squares. I kind of need to get rid of squares. What's the opposite of squaring? We take the square root. So if you take the square root of the left-hand side, the square is gone. If you take the square root of the right-hand side, you get the square root of 3, but just be careful. Just be careful. This is not the only number you can square that gives you 3. There's another number. The negative. So I have to write a plus or minus in there. That's really, really important. Okay. One more line, and then we finally have our answer. I just want x. I don't want x plus 2. So what do I do to both sides to get x on its own? Subtract 2. I'm going to write it at the front. Now, what does this mean? What does that mean, right? 